Hi everybody, it's Dave again with Mountain Bike Academy. I'm going to talk with you today about how to achieve flow, and it is not what you expect. Stay to the end. If you want to get all the keys, there is a specific thing that I guarantee you hasn't been covered at any clinic, any YouTube video, any coaching session, or any online course you've taken so far about achieving flow. Now I'm making this video specifically because there's so many people that do not ask about this, but rather they ask for more confidence. So whenever I'm talking to people or coaching a rider, they specifically say to me, I just, you know, I just want some more confidence on the bike. This is something that's so easily preventable. And it's something that has actually been uh, really a subject of mastery in a whole lot of other fields, except for mountain bike coaching specifically. So I intend to be the number one resource for where to go to build confidence on the mountain bike. So that's why I'm here. That's what I'm doing. And if you want to join the 1% of riders who finally figure this stuff out and ride like a kid again, you're in the right place. So buckle up, watch to the end. Let's dive in. Let's talk first about the definition of flow. First of all, science defines flow essentially as liquid flowing or going from A to B continuously. So if we look over here at the left side of the screen, this is literally the definition from, I mean, go Google it. Flow is an object moving from A to B continuously. What we're talking about today, though, is how you can feel that, that state of flow, that exhilaration of showing up on your bike and doing something that you're proud of in front of your friends, ideally. So let's dive in. Now, instead of just flowing from A to B continuously, we need to talk about how to get into a state of flow and, and first, I want to talk about the fact of the matter that um, there is a difference in difficulty and skill. And in between those differences, if you look over here on the left side, you'll see right here, this is you. This is how you feel flow in your body, your mind, and it actually makes the ride worth it when you're out on your bike. So over here on the left side, we'll see that if you look here, it's difficulty is high, right? Let's see if I can actually, oh yeah, now we're talking. So if we take a look at this chart, difficulty, it's really high, okay? And when the difficulty is super, super high up here, and the skill level is low, so at this part of the graph, when difficulty is high, skill is low, guess what? You're in trouble. You're probably going to crash. I remember the first time that I tried to make a turn on a mountain bike and there was a berm in front of me. Instead of me going to the left, which is where the berm went, I went straight, <laughs> I went straight over the top of the berm and put a huge gash in the back of my calf. And my friend had to take me to the emergency room to get stitches. So that is what I mean by danger. It means that the difficulty of the trail or the task in front of you is is too high and you're probably going to crash. That's That's like right here. Okay. Now, as we move a little bit further along, so as we move a little bit further along here, where maybe our skill gets a little bit better, and the difficulty is still really high, you're still likely to crash, but it, it's almost like this, this does diminish a bit as we go. Now, the crazy thing starts to happen once skill and ability match, you might have fun right here, but you will not experience flow. Why is this? Because flow, and they've done a, quite a bit of studies on this with high-level athletes and endurance people and, and people just doing all around really good things. The, the challenge is that you have to be able to find a place in your riding and specifically tasks on the bike that actually challenge you just a little bit past your skill your current skill. Does that make sense? So uh, when, when, you're, when your difficulty and the skill is right kind of in this little pocket right here. And there are some people that say that the difficulty has to be a little bit bigger than your skill. I would just say that if you stay right here in this little triangle where you're not crashing, that's the distinction. It's challenging enough for it to feel dangerous, but you overcome it where it feels like your skill is a little bit better than the trail. This is where you achieve flow. This is where I think you should really try to find yourself on the trail. So uh, really simple, how do you do this? Well, just find something that maybe scares you a little bit that you know you can do and plan for it, work up to it and, and ride with some friends. So this is, the key here is that 
everything on the right side of this graph beyond this inflection point right here, everything to the right is actually safe, okay? So as your skill increases and as the difficulty goes down, you're more and more likely to be safe. Now, if we're in a state of flow, it's also likely that if you lose control or maybe, you know, you go bouncing a little bit over some roots or maybe don't make the turn quite the way that you want to, it's likely that you're probably not going to crash. You're just going to laugh about it. This is where I like to be with my riding, again, right here in this triangle where my skill is slightly bigger than the difficulty because I'm in control of my bike. Now that we've got the definition of flow kind of out of the way and put a lot of colors on the screen, let's zoom back out and talk about the three beliefs that have to be in place in order for you, a rider, to experience flow. These are very simple. The first one is to trust yourself. The second belief is to trust your plan or your intention. And then the third is you literally need to be able to trust your bike, your equipment, your, your physical steed, your shred sled beneath your feet. You got to trust it. Now let's talk about the, the kind of beliefs that pop up. Now here on the left side, this is left side out of flow beliefs that keep you from enjoying flow no matter what your skills are. I could never, I could never ride that steep chute. That's way above my skill level. No matter how much practice I ever do, I'll never be able to do that. Wow, I could never win a race. There's no way. My skill level is so bad. My equipment's so bad. I, like, I, I could never do that. Um, another example could be, oh my gosh, being good enough to be taken seriously as a coach for the local kids in my community, I could never do that. No way. They would look at me. They would laugh. They would, they would see right through and they could tell that I'm just a beginner with a nice bike. These I could never beliefs will, I mean, everybody has them to some extent, but they're one of the things that can absolutely kill your ability to enjoy the ride and experience flow. Uh, I'm not going to talk to you about any mindset work to get out of these. I just want to identify those. So bear with me here. The second one that's just an underconfident belief is just send it. Just send it, man. Just send it, bro. <laughs> Just send it is the equivalent of, of uh, ignoring your conscience. And, and quite frankly, you'll find this mostly with um, when I first started riding, I was 20 years old, and, and that was our way to build confidence. We would crash our way to confidence. We would literally crash our way to confidence. It was a lot of fun. We, we kind of wore our crashes as a badge of honor. Or I still have scars and I'm proud of, not going to lie. Uh, and, and this one, this one's crazy dangerous because a lot of people ride with this negative belief of just send it, you know, and again, remember this is related to trust the plan. Okay. You don't need a plan. You're probably not going to make it anyway. We're here to get busted up and bruised. Uh, you know, it's a badge of honor. Again, this is uh, quite frankly, it's a lot of fun. This is a lot of fun when you're 15, 12 years old, 20 years old, and you can recover quickly and you don't pay for your own health insurance and no one's counting on you to pay the bills. So um, not picking on anyone here, but again, this is just identifying another belief that keeps us out of flow because in this state, the only time you're ever joyful after this is if you get lucky. And again, we're not playing the game of getting lucky here. We're playing the game of what do 1% of mountain bikers achieve? They achieve flow on command. Very few riders achieve this on command. And one of the things that'll eventually get you out of the game because of too many injuries or, or just losing your confidence over time is just send it, bro. Now, obviously we got to trust our bike. So a great, you know, out of flow belief that can exist is what if my tires explode? What if my, you know, Oh, I haven't, I haven't done that tune up. I, I hear a noise coming out of my shock. What's that rattling in my down tube? What's that rattling in my wheel? Why is it that when I turn left, my bike <laughs> starts slipping? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, just uh, I'm making these up. So, you know, literally this one is uh, go to a bike shop and get it fixed. If you don't know how to, you, know, you got to trust your bike. So uh, obviously this one, this one can get in the way. Now there's also some overconfident beliefs that are not in alignment with the three beliefs that we need to have flow. These are overconfident beliefs based on false pretenses, or they're just based on, you know, being a newbie sometimes. So 
no offense to anyone here, if you're thinking this, I'm just letting you know that these are some things that will keep you out of flow. Here's one for trusting yourself. That's easy. I saw it on YouTube. <laughs> this is being oblivious. This is not even knowing what you're up against. This is this is kind of like saying, oh man, I saw some guy on on uh, on YouTube or on you know I saw some pro do this. It doesn't look that hard. That's kind of like ignoring the whole premise of our sport, which is that it's very difficult and anyone can do it <clears throat> uh, without even trying. So obviously uh, this is kind of hilarious because you know where have we seen this one before? The just send a belief. Maybe this is, my plan isn't good enough, but I'm going to do it anyway because I know that my plan is insufficient, or I know that I have never cleared this rock garden before, so I'm just going to jump 20 feet deeper into it and hope that things work out. Uh, this is almost like a, a false confidence, okay? So false confidence, I'll get to this in a second of why it doesn't give you flow and why it ultimately can be the reason why you get sent home to the hospital rather than to your family if you have this belief. So it's just not something to mess around with. Just send it is probably the worst advice unless you have all these three <laughs> three beliefs completely dialed, okay? This is like a this is like the last thing you need to do, not the first thing you need to do. Uh, finally, then trusting your bike and overconfident belief could be something like literally my 2004 Walmart mongoose is fine. Let's go. Definitely not true. <laughs> so what I noticed what you should notice when you take a look at these these three core beliefs that you have to have in order to achieve flow is that I talked about confidence. Okay. So let's talk about confidence for just a second before we go any further. My dad, this is my, again, my name is David Davidson. All right. This is me. And this saying came from my dad. This is my dad, okay? So if you're wondering who names their kid that, my dad. And honestly, it wasn't even his idea. As you can see, he was named David Davidson by my grandfather, who's named Jack. I still haven't figured that one out. So <laughs> back to the point, though. Confidence comes from competence, or confidence equals competence. Competence means you're good at something. Okay, and only 1% of riders find this out and end up getting flow in their riding each and every day. Only 1% of riders ever go out to the trail and say, today I know I'm going to have a good ride, and then they do. And not only is it a good ride, but it's a ride they're proud of, and all of the people on the trail are looking at them going, oh my goodness, are they, are they a pro? I mean, they look kind of like regular guys, but are they sponsored? Wait, are they, are they like leading, a, are they coaching? Are, are they... Because that's ultimately what we want to do. We want to be good enough for our friends and our peers to look at us and say, wait a second, are they, are, are they like one of those riders that we see on TV? We want to be the rider that's looked to as someone who could give a lesson. That's someone who wants to give back and, and help, right? So you actually have to be great at riding to feel confident, period. And it's hard work. I do agree that it does take practice. Now, here's the thing. You've, if you've tried clinics, if you tried practicing, if you tried riding with better riders than you, if you tried to study YouTube and online courses, if you tried all these things and it's failed, there's a reason why. And it's not your fault. It's just literally because no one has shown you, one, this concept of flow. They've told you techniques. They've maybe even shared some mindset tricks for you, okay? But they've never shown you the foundation of what it actually takes to get into flow. Remember, confidence equals competence. If you are not an expert level rider yet, if you have these beliefs right here running through your head, guess what? You do not have confidence and therefore you do not have competence at the level that you want it. Now, I'm not trying to be harsh here at all. I'm just trying to be very, very honest with you because what a lot of people will say, and the reason why a lot of these people that are popular, and if, quite frankly, I think they're doing a great thing. Uh, a lot of the reason why these people that you listen to, the, the popular ones, I'm not naming any names because they're great people, they're doing a great thing, they're promoting mountain biking, and they're sharing positivity. The problem with just sharing positivity and technique is that it doesn't fix the root issue, okay? 
what I've found when working with writers all over the globe is that confidence comes from competence. And this confidence is the foundation of the three beliefs that have to be there. Okay. And these three beliefs flow into your physical skill. Okay. Do you follow yet? This is making sense. So the most important thing you can do is focus on this foundation here, this confidence and this competence. The problem is you don't get any points. You get, you get put into this situation if you just throw your bike at things with techniques. You're guaranteed to be in over your head at some point in time. If you're a beginner rider and you try to go out and do difficult things to build your confidence, you will crash. You will fall off your bike. You will look silly in front of people, which is fine. But eventually, it'll build up a bank of negative experiences. And ultimately, you'll start believing more towards this side over here. And I don't want that for anyone here. That's why I started this whole thing. So you can hear me getting very passionate about this because confidence and competence are something that so few people get to experience, but it's the reason why we work hard in life. You might as well try to get out of this if you're something, if you're going to do the work anyway, if you're going to practice, you might as well get the confidence and the competence. Okay. Now I'm not talking about six months. I learned to do a front wheel lift. Oh my gosh. Like, nobody's going to, no, nobody at the office is going to be like, you did a, a what again? A front wheel lift? Like they're not going to care. But if you show them a video of you sending a 15 or 20 foot jump, or if you show them you in a race where you placed on the podium and they're going to think, you know, Carl from the office on, you know, cubicle 23 is actually pretty cool. Right? So if you want confidence and competence, what you must do, and this is the, this is the key right here. You must earn your body and your mind difficulty points safely. This is everything. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't go to a skills camp. I'm not saying you shouldn't go to clinics. I'm not saying you shouldn't study YouTube. I'm not saying you, please, and quite frankly, please, please, please follow all of the YouTube influencers that are doing the how-to stuff. That's, that's fine. Like, please, the more that they get promoted, the bigger our sport grows and the better overall it's going to be. Just don't count on them to earn true confidence and competence at the level you know you can, at the level you deep down are desiring to go to. Why? Because you must earn difficulty points safely. In other words, you must make your body know what it feels like right here. You must make it know what it feels like to do the things in this orange triangle before going 35 miles an hour on a mountain bike and sending yourself through the air. Okay. So in order to do this, you, you have to incorporate a couple things into your training regimen. Number one is, is you have to incorporate movement work. Okay. Now there are specific movements based off of, you know, just, uh, where your body's at and what you can and can't do. And that's something we do in the athlete accelerator called the mountain bike movement reset, where, um, if you take a look right here on the screen, I'm sharing, this is kind of what it does. It helps people go, Oh my gosh, I haven't been able to do this in so many years. Uh, this helped me out. So you have to do movement work. Movement work allows you to connect with your body and build a mind muscle connection that is immutable. It doesn't go away. Number two, you must practice with a goal and an intention in mind. The other day, I went out to ride straight up the green trails. I've got a video on TikTok I just posted up, and it was me you know, doing some pretty flat green trails. I had a blast, but my intention that day was to jump about a 20-foot jump where you come in, and it's a left turn, then you got two right-hand pumps, and then a tiny little lip in front of a giant rock face with a rock landing on the other side. And there's about 10, 15 little rocks, makes a little rock garden. So I wanted to jump over and land both my tires in an exact spot, specific goal that was difficult. Now, I don't think I was you know, in risk of, at risk of crashing, but the specificity and the difficulty of landing my tires where I wanted to land them made it difficult. So 
You must do movement work and you have to practice with a goal and intention in mind. These are the main ideas for today. Thanks so much for listening in. Catch you on the next one. Like and subscribe and share this with a writing friend if you think this is valuable. Plus, if you think this is if you think that this really resonates with you, go ahead and like I said, subscribe to the channel. If this is if this training makes sense to you and you're like, this is something that I want, go ahead and take the next step. You know, you're already part of the Society of Shred. You're part of the 1% of riders who are going to the next level. Go ahead and click on the link below. For the rest of the month of January, I have two spots available for coaching to work with me directly. This is not something that I normally do. Uh, we just had a couple spaces open up. And if you want to come in and get coached on exactly how to do the movement work, exactly how to do the mountain bike movement reset, and ride like a kid again, go ahead and hit the link below. You'll talk to me personally. We'll dive into what's working, what's not with your riding, exactly what's holding you back. If it's not the mountain bike movement reset, I will straight up tell you, I have no, uh, it, it doesn't help me to bring in someone who isn't a fit for this. So instead, what I'll do is I'll point you to whatever would be best. And if this is the right thing for you, I'll show you step by step exactly how I've helped hundreds and hundreds of other riders around the globe achieve these same kind of flow results that you're hoping to make yourself. So go ahead and click the link below, like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.